Welcome everyone to Magical Aspirations, a podcast for magical people, where we aspire to gather all of the knowledge that magic has to offer. It's a place to illuminate and demystify all things magical. Well, welcome, magical people, to Magical Aspirations, a podcast for magical people, where we aspire to illuminate and demystify all of the things that magic has to offer. We're going to make up new taglines today, apparently, and we are going to welcome <laughs> our co-hosts, Annalisa and Adriana. Hello! Hola! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. So we have just came off of a, a silly and accountable chat with each other. And <laughs> so we are just kind of rolling in our conversations this morning. We have got a few things to talk about today. Um, we are right around the corner from Imbolc. And so we're definitely going to chat about that and what that means to each of us individually. Um, what are some traditions revolving around in bulk? Um, what is some of the magic of the holiday? And we are going to talk about accountability. Um, since that is something that we've been chatting about quite a bit over the last month, we're just going to kind of check in with each other and see where we're at on our magical journeys and maybe if we need to pivot, what that looks like and where we're going. So we are just excited to be here with each other today. Yes, as always. How are you guys doing today? Good? We are good. Good. Yes, absolutely. We are good. good. I am still giggling about our little mention of accountability because, well, folks, (laughs) I'll be the first one to say it. When we were mentioning whether we were going to talk about accountability, I don't remember what I'm supposed to be being held accountable for. (laughs) So, um, honesty, that's the first part of accountability, right? Is admitting that you need to be (laughs) better. You need to be better. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I had to, I was like, oh shit, we're going to be talking about this today. Let me hurry up and go back to my notes um, to go see what it is that we're going to be talking about. Uh, yeah, those were some big lofty goals mm-hmm. that we stated out. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I can I can go into more, but uh, yeah, Becky, how's that going for you? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just came back from vacation, so, (laughs) Um, and actually, I just want to chime in and say that I have been able to put in some little nuggets of working towards my goals and Mm. um, balancing rest and work, um, which is something Mm. that's been really challenging for me in the past. So I would say, you know, two steps forward here, um, not, you know, running the marathon yet by any means. Mm -hmm. Um, But one of my big goals um, was to learn more about astrology this year. And Mm. um, I just keep seeing different messages that are really resonating um, for me. The more that I learn about what's going on with the planets and in the sky above us. So that's been really cool because kind of no matter where I'm at, I'm receiving the information. So whether that's Mm -hmm. someone new I followed on Facebook, um, it's something in my planner, it's one of the podcasts that I listen to, I'm kind of in that front, you know, lining myself up for success to learn more about it because it is like around me all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's something that is like working for me because it's like just the saturation of information. It's not like, okay, it's 7 a.m. I need to sit down and read about astrology for half an hour today. (laughs) Absolutely. Because that shit doesn't really work for me very well, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Loving the beauty of being able to honor and respect how you receive the information, how you learn best and flowing with it instead of trying to do something completely different that you already know is going to cause more tension right it does help. yeah yeah and uh, that's good writing in the planner um as much as i can um writing things out like self-care 
um, mm. writing ahead of time. Okay, I'm going to go to the yoga class on Monday, um, you know, and then pencil in the other things that I have to do, but writing down those things, you know, my workouts ahead of time, like I said, yoga, um, things about my diet. I know I'm going to like meal prep this day. Um, mm. So just trying to be better at recording those things because when I take the time to like think about it and record it, I'm a lot more likely to do it. Mm. I feel that I feel that because I one of the overarching themes for me recently has been trying to keep a balance between the magical side and the muggle side while like keeping them separate but also figuring out how to interweave them um and I my planner has also been big help for that I have been writing this fucker is full i have never <laughs> quite filled in a journal or a planner as much as i have this one and this i've had it since let's see like early november and like there's mm. a ton of shit in here i'm really proud of myself for that um but what i like about it is that it's got the you know big sections for each of the days and they're broken up into two sections so one of the things that i have started doing is there is a column for the muggle shit that i need to do um, mm. vacuum my house, do my laundry, stuff like mm -hmm. that. But then I also, on the other, other column, I've started doing like my tarot card of the day, making sure that like I read for fun, oh, but then I also read for knowledge. Um, and it, yeah, it puts it all together on the same mm -hmm. day because like, I, I struggle with prioritizing, especially the magical things because the muggle can weigh so heavy sometimes. My husband travels a lot. So there's a lot of times that when he's gone, I have to balance double the things that I normally do. Mm. And sometimes I get really bogged down in that. So I have been every day pulling a tarot card and trying to weave that into storytelling. Because mm -hmm. I don't mm. learn. Y'all mentioned about like changing the way that we learn things. Sometimes I can read a book forever like a good book for fun like I could sit and get lost in that and there are other books that like you'll read for education like I can also mm -hmm. sit and read that for days on end but the information doesn't stick sometimes mm -hmm. so there has been a book that has been trying to come out of me for years now and so in trying to nourish that need and understand the tarot better I'm trying to tell more like Pick a card for the day, not for what it means for my day, but just to step back, be the observer and tell the story that's happening on the card. And that has mm. been, that's been an interesting learning for me because I am also a chronic with one of the reasons I struggle with tarot cards is that I'll just keep pulling. I'll keep pulling mm. for more information to try and tell the story better. And then all of a sudden there's all of this information in front of me that I'm like, I don't fucking know how this talks to each other at all. I found an app. It's a tarot card of the day app and it only pulls one card. There's no option for other cards, more cards, different cards. You get one <laughs> card of the day. But that's been a really good basis for me because then I have it on my phone, but then I go and I pull that card from one of my decks at home and actually like sit and look with it and like get to feel the card. Um, so since we're talking about accountability, that's going to be something I would like y'all help being accountable on. Being a storyteller and sticking to the melding of the muggle and the magic. Uh, amazing. Okay, so okay. first of all, that was one of your goals that you mentioned that you yeah. wanted to work on. So uh, you've been You're doing, doing it, man. Yeah. Well, good. Well, good. <laughs> See, that I, I get so out of sight, out of mind sometimes that like this is why these accountability groups are important because like mm. that's not even something that I really remembered saying. So good for, yeah. good for me. Good for me. Yeah. Good job. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Also... Doing the stories from the tarot, girl, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's so beautiful. And honestly, it's just going to make you that much more stronger in your ability to divine with the tarot cards because you and already have your connections with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And something that I was thinking about this morning was that I, like, accountability also comes with, like, calling yourself on your shit, but, like, also giving yourself credit. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. I don't think I realized just how clairvoyant I am until this week. I was listening to mm. a podcast in my car, like really only halfway listening while still having like this whole train of thoughts. Um, mm -hmm. and a picture came into my mind very suddenly and I was just kind of like, okay, whatever. And I brushed it away, went on about, just kept on going down my day. 
And then this morning I was looking for, I've got some travel coming up. So I was looking for my passport. I haven't seen my passport in like, I don't know, six or seven months from the last time I traveled. And I started having like a little baby panic attack because I was like, fuck, where is my goddamn passport? And I call on all of my little Catholic babies out there, handy dandy St. Annie, please help me find X thing here and then thank him for it. And I did that. I was like, okay, <laughs> handy dandy St. Annie, please help me find my passport so I can stop panicking. Thank you. And I immediately got a picture of the backpack that I last used for Shut traveling up. that's like tucked what? away in a closet. <laughs> and I was like, it's not there. It's not there. And like, I kept just like moving on. And finally I was like, fine, I will go find the fucking backpack. And where was it? It was in the backpack. That's like, awesome. <laughs> so yeah, that was a cool note of that. Like, I always thought clairvoyancy was like, seeing it in your physical mm. space but like this vivid color picture came to my like the pocket like i zipped open the pocket and that was exactly what happened moments later i zipped open the pocket and mm. there it was like so mm, mm, mm. Hmm. have you guys Finally. had any moments like that recently L literally this week <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yes um so i was walking hollow in the morning and so normally on saturday and sundays i'll take her on a long walk in the morning um and so we were doing our long walk and uh where we walk is kind of like back behind like some businessy type buildings not really a lot of traffic there um and i just kept hearing gato 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 which means cat in spanish mm -hmm. and i'm like why is why why is my brain repeating this this word over and over again and as soon as we turn the corner there's a black cat and then there's kittens <laughs> somewhere else in the bush i'm like oh Please, my god i <laughs> cannot <laughs> I cannot. This is insane. Such a small thing. It didn't really have, you know, like much to do with me or like anything that I needed. But it was just like the energy saying like, hey, there's a cat here. And then I was like, wow, I really should listen to that little voice a little bit more um, sometimes. So, you yeah. You should. <laughs> that makes yeah. me, do you have any connection to the Spanish language or do you think the cat was a Spanish cat? Oh, you know what? Oh, I did not think about that. Um, <laughs> like, yeah, why Spanish? Why gato? Why? Like, no, but actually, um, I've been wanting to relearn Spanish, but oh. that's like a, a goal mm -hmm. that's way it's like back there in the back of my brain. Mm -hmm. Um, so maybe this this was a Latinx uh, cat. Okay, right? Yeah, cool. I'm here yes. for it. <laughs> oh, interesting. That makes me think of. <laughs> Last week, I was watching stupid movies because I was home alone and I'm going through Amazon Prime and I wanted something funny. And I found Puss in Boots. Yes! <laughs> I watched Puss in Boots last week. And I, I love, love his that. little mix in Spanish. You know how he throws in everywhere. Yes. So. <laughs> Puss in Boots. <laughs> Who doesn't want Antonio Banderas to be the no, narrator actually, of their life, well, right? Yeah. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> well, some, something that I don't know if you would call us clairvoyance, but something that I've had happen to me recently, the last week or two, um, I went to visit my family back home because we didn't go over the holidays and, um, you know, just interacting with people that I love and care about and have for a long time, but don't really have daily contact with. Um, I was just getting feelings that I should share with them things that are going on in my life. Hmm. And, um, you know, sometimes whenever you see your family, oh, how are things going? Oh, it's fine. Like, everything's mm -hmm. great. You know, you don't really share the whole truth with everyone. And mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> especially whenever there's some things that you think that they might not want to hear. Right. Um, if you're, like, not happy in something that's going on or if there's, like, a bad situation. um but I felt kind of compelled to share more of my story with my family about how I was feeling and what's been going on and about some potential changes in my life. And uh, they were all so completely receptive and encouraging. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it was really heartwarming. And I don't, I don't know why I got the feeling that like, okay, now you should tell them like you mm -hmm. need to share this with them. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. So there's kind of that like sense from spirit. Like I definitely felt like a Claire, but I don't know what, <laughs> but it was that feeling like. I th is that Claire sentience? That's sentience. just the knowing. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. just that like, knew that I should tell them and that it would be well received. Yeah. That sounds like a mix of the Claire sentience with the feeling part of it yeah. and then the knowingness of Claire cognizance. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. How fascinating. Is that both for you guys? The the I guess because Adriana, if you heard words, that'd be clear audience. And Becky, are those mm -hmm. it's same for you guys? Is that new things or things that you've gotten little tidbits and you've kind of just ignored before? Because for me, the the clairvoyant, the pictures in my mind, that is something that has always happened, and I've only just recently begun to recognize it as special or different. Mm. The sentience is pretty common for me, um, mm. but I sometimes, you know, disregard it or you mm. know, that. <laughs> when yeah, you're like, you shouldn't feel like that. <laughs> but bitch, you do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, Claire, Claire audience is pretty regular for me. Um, it's just always interesting when it decides to kick up a notch or when it's not really present so yeah, or that it's, it's multilingual <laughs> or that it's multilingual exactly mm -hmm. exactly um but it's one of the more fascinating clairs at least for me so mm -hmm. yeah. fascinating well i love being able to have this track so that like because we've talked about with accountability and like even just for like little things like this for us to be able to have like these lines of demarcation for like many years later to be able to listen like oh five years ago i didn't mm. know that i was clairvoyant but now i do um, and to move <laughs> that back around to astrology, I find whenever things like this happen that like, so in our last chat, we talked about, you know, planets changing and moving and things finally feeling like they're moving forward. And that's mm -hmm. exactly how I felt this past week for sure was mm -hmm. that things felt clearer, things felt less foggy. Um, I got to, for the, for the first time I've flexed my Reiki muscle pretty hard that I've never mm. Reiki. I haven't talked about it very much, but Reiki is something that is mostly been just for me, for me, for my family, for my animals, um, mm. for my work, obviously that I do with animals that has changed the way I work with animals, but I got to help a friend in need. I've never been very willing to want to help people i guess because that's people suck. but yeah and like it's just <laughs> never been like something that was on my radar but one of my people in my square um who i've never really been very open with about any of this stuff before um was having just kind of like a panic day and i was able to actually <sighs> Let me find my words. Hold on. Like to comfortably sit in the power of knowing mm. I had the power to help her. Like I didn't go mm. seeking it for someone to help someone in a moment of need. Um, mm -hmm. And it was really cool to be able to like be like, you know, call on that power to be able to help and then to move on with my day. Um so I find that fascinating. The same thing with the astrology that like now all of these channels are open and clear and that's mm -hmm. exactly what happened for me. That was really cool. Do you guys have any, mm -hmm. I'm sure similar feedback if I had to guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Basically, you know, I kind of alluded to that with having conversations with my family members, um, opening myself up to the idea of new possibilities and, um, literally a Google search later. I'm like, Oh my God, there are all of these options. And, um, you know, it's just that all of these things that I have been thinking and dreaming about for mm. months, years, you know, <laughs> I, there's like actually a way for me to implement those. Like I'm seeing mm. a path, but also mm. part of that is knowing that I don't have to have all the answers before taking that step. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I have to be Ooh, willing. That's a big note. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have to be willing to take a step and I might have to pivot, you know, mm -hmm. but I have to be willing to put in the work and take that step that could be something scary, you know, something different than what I've been doing and things like that for the universe to show me what is the right path. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's beautiful. Really good insight. Um, 
Yeah, it's this was a whirlwind of a week, honestly. Mm -hmm. Things moved incredibly fast. And like you, Becky, there was so much. So the week before and almost like the weeks before this this one, um, it was all like, these are our plans. This is what we're going to do. This is how I'm going to move. And like, this is what I'm putting in place. This past week came in and said, fuck your plans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> fuck your plans. What you thought, I'm going to switch it up and change it. Um, but each and every pivot, each and every change was for the better. Mm -hmm. And it was something that we just could not anticipate or could have planned for. But it showed up and said, this is what I need. This is how I need to shift. And we just kind of rolled with it from there. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that that was a huge lesson for me as well as to, yeah, it's good to have your plans. It's good for you to have how you want things to go, but also be okay with it moving, um, mm -hmm. which is where I got that inspiration for that last video I did about like praying for the patience, the discernment and mm -hmm. the goal to like, do the things because it does take a lot of courage to follow through on your goals, mm. to follow through on these projects, um, whatever mm -hmm. it is you're working on. Um, but then it also takes a fuck ton of patience. Mm -hmm. And that is something I was always told, do not pray for patience because you'll <laughs> then be met with really hard, difficult situations. Uh, but to just say that you are patient, to act in patience. Um, and it does. Sometimes things get put on the back burner. Sometimes mm -hmm. they stop. Sometimes the obstacles are bigger than you probably think you can handle. And so mm. that was a really good reminder for this week of like, yeah, okay. We, we see you. We see where you're headed. We see what you're trying to put into place. But let me just tweak it just, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, so, yeah, that was that was my lesson for this week. <laughs> yeah. No, mm -hmm. I same same thing here that uh, accountability, vulnerability and authenticity. Those are mm. have been like the words of this past week, because so we before we got on here, we were kind of just having a little business meeting about, you know, we're coming up on the end of season two here. What do we want our year two for magical aspirations to look like? Uh, oh, son of a bitch. I got distracted by my tarot cards and lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was going to be happen. looping back around. Got, it happens all the time. I've just got so much pretty shit over here that now I'm definitely <laughs> a raccoon in another life. I have no doubt. Um, <laughs> eventually, I was going to loop that back around to that we are coming up on in bulk. And like mm. that's another thing that I haven't been vocal about needing accountability for is that so being a mostly solo practitioner, you know, I'm kind of just over here like, doing my willy nilly little thing and like, ain't nobody fucking watching me. And I'm just over here mm -hmm. doing it. Um, one of the things that I wanted to prioritize this year was to study the Sabbaths more. It's always something mm -hmm. like you hear the equinoxes mm -hmm. and the solstices and you pay attention for all that stuff, but it, I wanted to study what they are about. So that's what I did mm -hmm. last night. I sat down, I made all kind of notes and things like that. The most, and I mentioned this earlier when we were chatting before, that I saw someone talk about on one of the social medias about uh, in bulk being the time where the ice begins to freeze. And that was another kind of vivid imagery that I got of like the- Hold up, hold you know, up. The ice hold begins up, hold to up. melt. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> oh, that the ice begins to melt and yeah. then like things start to- wash forward and release and begin to nourish the land. Um, that was a, some powerful imagery for me. What, Becky, I know since yeah. you've been a practicing pagan for as long as you have, what does in bulk mean for you? Yeah, so it's it's neat that you say that, and that's why I had to correct you um, about <laughs> the ice melting is because in my mind, the visual, I have seen this image so many times. It's a person basically inside of a seed and they're under the in the ground and their hand is reaching up through the ground mm. and so it's like they are sprouting from that seed and so in bulk is the time that we are starting to sprout from 
the seed that we have like put together, you know, all of the work that we put into it over the winter time, um, the rest, the taking care of ourselves, the reflection, all of that, Mm -hmm. that this is the time that we can start to sprout. Mm. Mm. I love that so much. (laughs) So if you look, I, of course, I always start in any research that I do, I look up the definition of the thing that I'm looking Mm -hmm. up. Um, And it, the word in bulk means in the belly of the mother, because Mm -hmm. the seeds of spring Mm -hmm. are beginning to stir in the belly of mother earth. That was another really powerful, I agree, image of, isn't that what we've been talking about for the whole first, like it's been been 25 minutes talking about the seeds that we're planting and starting to see growth Mm -hmm. and like not, Mm -hmm. not pushing them. And and that I wanted to give credit to you, Adriana. I saw this week, um, job posting is a big thing for you. And I saw Mm -hmm. you put it off twice because you were Mm -hmm. tired. That is so, Mm -hmm. I'm really proud of you for that because I know that had to be difficult (laughs) to actually just be like, I'm fucking tired. I'm not doing it. But like, Mm -hmm. like Becky was saying, like prioritizing work Mm -hmm. and rest I, yeah, yeah. I'm proud of all of us for being better about that in just mm-hmm. this first month of the year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I second that. Um, I'm curious around so in bulk, mm-hmm. this in the belly of the mother. That's already a powerful imagery <laughs> to begin with. Mm-hmm. Um, it's making me think about how like the literal act of being in a mother's womb and not really remembering what that was like Mm. in that darkness and almost like this release of whatever happened during that gestation period it is what it is but once you have been birthed like that's Mm -hmm. kind of this beginning this new fresh start is that is there something I I'm asking all these questions mostly because like still the Sabbaths are also new to me as well. And Mm -hmm. so, yeah, just, I don't know. I feel like I had something, but it's, yeah. So Mm -hmm. Imbolc traditionally is linked back to Bridget um, or Mm -hmm. Bridget um, Mm -hmm. and, you know, popping back to your Catholic practitioners, you will know about the saint, um, Mm -hmm. but she was um, a Celtic goddess who ruled the fire. And so Imbolc is actually the first fire festival of the year. So it is that first spark. Um, It's also named after um, the time when the ewes would get their first milk. Um, Mm -hmm. So they had, they had their babies, you know, they're pregnant over the winter and it's finally warm enough that they can have their young and they start to produce the milk. Mm. So traditional celebrations um, for Imbolc would include things like making a Bridget's Cross or what uh, came to be known as a God's Eye, if you remember making those at like camp, <laughs> where you mm. have like two um, the popsicle sticks and yarn and mm-hmm. weaving them together, um, that that was actually Bridget's symbol. Um, and also having for your celebrations, you know, starting the fire and um, having, you know, consuming dairy um, or leaving a dairy offering for Bridget. That's dope. <laughs> and with it, time, the time of year of us using like that analogy of gestation and like being born, um, it's a very popular time of year, especially for those um, who are Wiccan um, to have a type of initiation. So if you're going to like start on your path or you're going to devote through your next year to like studying a certain path or things like that, that in bulk would be the time that you take that oath. And in bulk, oh, yeah, in bulk actually was the time that I took my first oath to my path. Mm. Wow. So this is really special for you. Yes. And that would have been 18 years ago. Ah, it's a whole child. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. With um, Jen that we interviewed on the podcast a few months ago. Oh, wow. She helped me uh, perform my own um, initiation ceremony. Mm. And Mm. so at that time, I initiated um, to my path, which I'll share 
now. Um, but typically at the time that you're going through it, you don't really share that part of your magic. It's a private thing mm -hmm. and, you know, an oath between you and deity and things like that. Um, but the goddess that spoke to me the most at that time, which I think is kind of funny at this point, um, is Caridwen. And mm. she was the Celtic goddess of the cauldron. <laughs> she has <laughs> crows. <laughs> <laughs> and um, speaks across worlds. A shapeshifter. Mm. Um, and it's just the reason that I say, you know, looking back, it's kind of funny is she is one of the, the darker deities or darker goddesses that mm. um, represents, you know, magic and speaking between worlds and things like that. Um, it's not typically someone that someone would pick right off the bat to jump in with, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> you got to listen when they speak. So that's absolutely. right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Baby Reverend Raven was brewing 18 years ago yep. in there mm -hmm. and she has mm -hmm. burst forth. Yeah. She has her wings now. Dark Caco. priestess and all. <laughs> <laughs> Is do you, uh, that makes me think did you did little Becky then know that this was where she was going to, rev mm. to being Reverend Raven like Absolutely. Had, not. Did question. you have no, no, absolutely not even not. in your wildest dreams. Absolutely not. I had no wow. idea. <laughs> no idea. I was um, just learning and opening my mind to all of the things that were around me. Um, you know, part of my story that I've told before is that I was brought up Christian um, mm -hmm. and I just kept meeting more and more pagans <laughs> my freshman year of college. And I had no idea even what that meant other than you know the things that you hear in pop culture about you know right. pagans and godless heathens and things like that and <laughs> now i'm a now i'm a god full heathen right <laughs> <laughs> i like that one i got that plenty of them great pleasure you know? Know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah just no idea where i would end up that i would be in new orleans and being part of a spiritual community and it's no idea, you know. Do um, you celebrate in bulk any differently now than you did then? Um, yes, because I uh, get to celebrate it with my kindred. Um, mm -hmm. It is actually the time of year that we have a private event for only um, the blooded members. And those are the mm -hmm. ones that have taken, taken the oath to the rest of the members and the kindred. Um, we have, you know, other events and rituals that are open to the public or our community, but the in bulk is one specific for, like I said, the oath members. And it's a time of individual spiritual exploration. Mm. Um, and I get to guide my family um, in that exploration process. Mm. So that gives me like full body chills. Wow. Yes. <laughs> The first time that I led a guided meditation uh, for others was two years ago at the Embolk event. Wow. Uh, and I was uh. very intimidated because several of my brothers I knew were experienced practitioners and that they had, you know, done shamanic practices and that they had gone on journeys, you know, themselves several times. And I was scared, you know, to be frank, that I wouldn't know what to say. <clears throat> and my voice just cut out because that, mm -hmm. that was the spirit saying, you got it. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> They don't care if you have to clear your throat. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. what you think that you're going to say. If you open yourself up to spirit, the right words will come out in the right way. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Wow. So, it's so... Yeah, oh, go ahead. Go I ahead. was going to say, so this time, um, what I am preparing for our journey um, is about a journey into the future. Ooh. Mm. And what do we envision our futures looking like? Mm. And I'm looking over at my board of notes that I take, you know, just throughout whenever we're doing recordings and interviewing people. And I have written down here um, a new earth empathy mm. and i'm wondering mm -hmm. if creating that new earth is part of this journey that we're gonna go on 
Mm. Yeah, I would say so. (laughs) I would say so. Not to, you know, that's put the weight of the world on our shoulders, but I think that's part of what Mm -hmm. we're doing Mm -hmm. here. I think we're certainly figuring out how to, how to do that and what our place in that is. Yep. Um, I and love then when... we get to pick one or two goals to move forward with. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Action items, but one or two so that way we can focus on them and not get overwhelmed in right. all of the possibilities. Right. I love that. Keep the priorities close to vest and few and far between. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. otherwise you get lost. That's mm-hmm. what, you know, the same with the podcast. I felt we... We started with an idea. We've been pretty true to it, but you know, we've, there's been no, certainly no rhyme or reason. You know, we've had plenty of interviews. We've had plenty of chats Mm -hmm. like this. And like, we're still figuring out what our authentic message is. We know that being authentic and encouraging others to do their authentic magic is part of our mission, but yeah, we're figuring that out too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love when the magic of the season matches up with what we're magically doing without even paying attention Mm because like like i said i i always knew vaguely what in bulk was but never did much deep digging same with adriana she said this is a Mm -hmm. a, a new not new concept but like new deeper dive into something like this and i just appreciate how in my reading in my studying last night um so we know groundhog day is coming up right Mm -hmm. one of the first things it says about groundhog day is that though they fall on almost the same day groundhog day and in bulk are not related Mm. but wait oh no wait just this is how just how sorry silly america is sometimes um groundhog (laughs) day is believed to be an adaptation of the german candlemas celebration (laughs) involving a badger and candlemas is directly related to the mm-hmm. pagan celebration of Imbolc. Right. Isn't that huh. funny how America's like, no, no, no. No, this thank is you. Ours. This is ours. We took it from the Germans. Thank you, not the pagans. But mm-hmm. like, it's based Silly. on what's based on a pagan <laughs> celebration in Germany. And it's yep. just the message of that is that the magic will come through no matter what, no matter where you are, no Every matter what time. season it is. I just, I mm-hmm. find that infinitely fascinating. Mm-hmm. 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 I mean, that's, that's what we're doing. I feel like people are like, well, why, why do you want to be a magical practitioner? Why do you want to follow this practice? And I feel like a lot of it is like, yeah, because I want to manifest this and I want to be connected to this deity, blah, 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 blah. But ultimately, it's just to find alignment with the seasons, to find alignment mm-hmm. with the natural order, the natural yeah. world. Mm-hmm. To work your magic with the mm-hmm. earth. Mm-hmm. To right. work your magic with the earth. And everything okay. else is just a tool to do that. Totally. Exactly. Totally. Whether that is, you know, our divination systems, whether that is working with crystals, that's communicating with the animals, um, even mm-hmm. identifying with deity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The deities mm-hmm. are archetypes. Right. Mm-hmm. So we right. can understand the messages around us. And mm-hmm. isn't that I'm getting the the... It excerpt from the animal episode about learning mm-hmm. their language, being mm-hmm. able to yes. speak how they speak. And isn't that just the same thing that we're trying to do with the earth? We're just trying to figure out her language mm-hmm. to better serve, not serve, but, you know, work in conjunction with. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Huh. Mm-hmm. I want to read this here from, it's actually from my planner um, about in bulk. Um, It says, here we are in seed time, dream time, looking for the cracks of light that tell us to stretch out and grow. We are invited to consider this possibility. What if there is nothing wrong? What if there is no too slow? What if we live a miracle every single day and we don't even have to earn it? As the first shoots of tentative growth begin to lift and we sense the beginning sparks of possibility, of new ways of being, we may feel the itch to create a lengthy to-do for a new year. Resist and sit, curled and waiting. Uncover what is enough, not in the sense of playing too small, but the kind of enough that allows our hearts to expand and our shoulders to loosen, 
that allows creativity to blaze and joy to bloom. The kind of enough that opens space in our lives to hold ourselves in our seed dreams. Darkness yeah. and silence can hold both the sparks of our dreams and the embers of our hopes. We are our own seeds of promise. Mm. Wow. That's sure. That was written I... by Molly Rimmer. Let me give her credit. <laughs> Thank yes. you. Thank you, Molly. Molly Rimmer. <laughs> I'm going to need you to send me a picture of that because that's going straight into the show notes. That is, <laughs> I appreciate that. And I don't, I don't know about you guys, but I don't think we could sum this episode up any better than that. I, mm -hmm. yeah. Is there anything else that we want to touch on? I really can't think of much. No. Mm -hmm. That was, was a lot of info jam packed into just a short 40 minutes, but I'm here for it. <laughs> C'est la vie. C'est la vie. Yes. <laughs> we are good. Well, then on that note, um, definitely let us know how y'all decide to celebrate in bulk. Um, if there's any, you know, sparks that light in you, how you are going to emerge from your seed, please let us know. And remember to stay magical. Stay magical. Stay magical. <laughs>Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Magical Aspirations. Be sure to like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Magical Aspirations to keep up with the latest and the greatest from Annalisa, Adriana, and Reverend Raven. And to join in on the Magical Aspirations conversations. Come check out our website, MagicalAspirations.com, to find bonuses from our guests, our Magical Aspirations blog, and to reach out to our magical hosts with questions, comments, reviews, or ideas for future episodes. We are so grateful for each and every one of you listening. Thank you again, and as always, stay true to your magic.